Don't be dramatic. Put your hands in the air. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the most surprising and unpredictable moments on Amazon's Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Be warned, there are lots of spoilers to follow. You, um, you break the legs and I'll break the arms. Number 10, The House Explosion. I think they're just easing us in. Mm. Yeah, it's always like this at a stakeout at first. The first episode of Mr. and Mrs. Smith is pretty light on the spy stuff and by design. As Jane theorizes, Hi Hi eases the men with a simple mission. Follow a woman, intercept her package, and deliver it to an address. When they deliver the package to a large house, they see that it's nothing but a simple cake. Oh. Well, it is a little damaged. Uh, maybe a 50% discount. John and Jane are left so disappointed in the lack of excitement that they leave the house in anger. And that's when it blows up behind them. They're probably diplomats and there's an ingredient in the cake that they can't get in the States. Yeah, but then why do- The explosion comes as a complete shock and it instigates a harrowing tonal shift that rewards viewers for their patience. Number nine, meeting other John. Hi, hi. Enjoy your day off. The Smiths are given a much needed day off, so they head to a farmer's market and shop the local produce. And that's where their world opens up. John meets a friendly man at a juice stand, and he turns out to be another Smith working for the same agency. I'm John. Jane. His last name's Smith. It's one of us. Now what in the heck are the odds of that? Is this just an innocent coincidence, however unlikely it may be, or is there something more nefarious going on here? These are the types of questions that this bizarre meeting raises, and it turns a fun day out into something far more tantalizing and mysterious. At the end of the day, yeah, you've got some nicks and bruises, but John, it's a fantastic life. Number eight, the other Smith's mission. You know what? Really? You two should come. John and Jane hit it off with Other John, and both he and Other Jane are invited over for a friendly dinner. The couples get on really well, and the Other Smiths reveal that they work at the, quote, super high risk level of the company. What, what level are you two? We're high risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you? Super high risk. Super high risk. Yeah. Wow. Hoping to give the Smiths a taste, the Other Smiths invite them on a mission. The invitation alone is surprising enough, but then they put the Smiths on a helicopter and force them to do the mission alone. It proves their most serious yet, and they resort to grisly measures in order to get out alive. It's a seriously dark ending to an otherwise light episode, and it leaves us questioning the other Smiths even more than we already were. I really didn't like those two. I hate those two people. Number seven, John still talks to his mom. When they agree to become Smiths, John and Jane are given explicit instructions. Give up your past life and cease all contact with family and friends. No contact with anyone. I gave my mother. Jane doesn't have a problem with this as she has a bad relationship with her father. But John finds it a little more difficult. As we learn in the third episode, he is still in close contact with his mother and phones her multiple times a day. A few times a day. A few times a day? Jane is none too happy with this, claiming that it's irresponsible, unprofessional, and ultimately dangerous for his mother. It's a nice little reveal that humanizes John and drives the first of many wedges between him and Jane. There's a reason that's we it. don't keep contacts, John. This I'm, is, I know. This is, I, I, it's not a, it's, it's not a, dangerous, not just for us. It's dangerous for your mom. Number six, Hi Hi starts talking to Jane. It's from Hi Hi. And speaking of wedges, Hi Hi. This is the anonymous figure who gives John and Jane their missions. And up until this point, their relationship with the Smiths has been strictly go here, do that. But then Hi Hi starts talking to Jane on a more personal level. They compliment her on her work, ask if she's happy, and tell her that she is in line for a promotion. That's not what I signed up for. I don't want to go down. I want to keep going up. I thought we could have higher risk eventually. Things get even more substantial at the end of the episode when Hi Hi asks Jane if she'd like to replace her John. It's a startling plot development that promises great things for the future of the show, and it further manipulates the Smiths' relationship down the tragic path it's destined for. Well done, Jane. It's 
Probably just a typo. Number five, Bev is a rival agent. How long have you been seeing my husband? We're not seeing each other. Things are quite dire between the Smiths by episode seven. They're constantly fighting, on the verge of a separation, and John is seeing another woman named Bev. When she's confronted by Jane, Bev swears that nothing physical has occurred and that John simply enjoys her company over Jane's. Movies, so that's, that's what you guys do together. You watch movies. Yeah, sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, or we, we drink and smoke, talk, we, we, we just hang out. But then we're hit with a pretty serious plot twist. Bev is actually a target of John's, and she works for a rival company. Luckily, we learn that the exciting way, as Bev attacks the Smiths and, well, completely kicks their butts. It's a fun twist, and it proves the show's talent at blending the spy stories with the more grounded relationship drama. Yeah, I did give him a massage, and I didn't sleep with her. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, but you kissed her. Yeah, so what? Oh my god! Number four, Jane is shot at. Oh, I'm sorry, Maxie. Oh, god. I always come crawling back to you. In the final episode of the show, Jane is given the fateful order to terminate John. We all knew it was coming, even though we didn't want it to. But what we didn't see coming was Jane herself being targeted. Just as she's feeding her adorable cat Max, various shots ring through the window and nearly hit Jane. It's gonna smell. Unfortunately, there is one casualty, but let's not talk about that. This is an extraordinary scene, both hopelessly tragic and completely surprising. We are left to infer that the shooter intentionally missed Jane, hoping to frame John for the shooting and coerce Jane into attacking her ex-partner. Why did you kill Max? I didn't kill Max. Number three, what super high-risk means? It's a bummer. And we really liked you guys. We do. The other Smiths make a not-so-surprising reappearance in the final episode, interrupting a sincere conversation between John and Jane. It's here that we finally learn what super high risk entails. We've okay. finalized a lot of Smiths, but never in true serum. The show made it seem like super high risk was just that, extremely dangerous missions with a high chance of mortality. Well, it is that, but it's also so much more. The other Smiths not only admit that High High set up their initial encounter at the market, but they also reveal that Super High Risk entails terminating Smiths. It's a great reveal, and it sheds further light on the show's very first scene in which Alexander Skarsgård and Asa Gonzalez are gunned down by the other Smiths. You lay down suppressive fire from the porch, honey. You can draw their attention. I can flank them. Number two, Eric Shane dies. Step two, administer single dose of truth serum. Do not exceed single dose. Mr. and Mrs. Smith is full of fun guest stars, including John Turturro playing shady billionaire Eric Shane. John and Jane are tasked with infiltrating a black tie event and injecting Eric with truth serum. They are given explicit instructions to only give him one dose, but John and Jane have a miscommunication and accidentally give him two doses. You told me to do it! No, I told you I was gonna ah. do it! No! This results in Eric's slow demise, and he dies on the Smith's kitchen floor. His death comes as quite the shock. We knew that giving him two doses was not ideal, but we didn't think it would lead to his death. Furthermore, this becomes the Smith's first failed mission, and the episode ends with the harrowing cliffhanger that only two fails remain. Gulp. Who takes care of a dead body? We do. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, burning down the therapist's house. So, what brings you to therapy? John and Jane go to couples therapy, hoping to heal some major fractures in their relationship. It, um, does not go well. The Smiths seem to be making some headway in therapy, but then they learn that their conversations have been recorded. Before I forget, I want to give you this. What's that? Uh, those are the recordings. 
They are clearly uncomfortable with this revelation, you know, being spies and all. So they decide to burn down the therapist's house, hoping to eliminate all evidence of their interactions. It's a surprisingly dark turn of events, signaling that the Smiths will resort to some extreme measures in order to keep their identities on the down low. We didn't think they had it in them, but apparently they do. Yes, my house is completely on fire. There's smoke billowing out. Did you see any of these moments coming? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're very now. Yeah. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.